I believe he must be a last day conversation because he's the one that's going to let us know when all the fun's going to begin, praise God. And I believe we're on the edge of that, right on the edge, right out standing at the brink, man, ready to just dive in and go for it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we've been talking about cooperating with him as soon as I find the page that we're supposed to be on. Hallelujah. How many of you are cooperating? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Last week we talked about that after he reveals and shows us things, he will perform it in our life. So the much, as much as we can agree with the word of God, whatever we agree with in the word of God, he's the one responsible to bring it to pass in our life. So we need to get agreeable. With the word of God. Oh, that don't feel good. <laughs> oh my. Like taking a bath with your socks on. <laughs> oh Lord, help me. The Holy Spirit doesn't agree with you. He agrees with God. Amen. Amen? And like many times we're looking around trying to find him. If you get him, now look, see, it isn't this bad. So that he can agree with us. I'm going to get situated here in a minute. It's itching. <laughs> Not a comfortable feeling. If you believe that Jesus carried sin, sickness, and poverty, then that's what you'll have in your life, and you agree with him because that's what he did. So we're going to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was announced in the Old Covenant under the old, in the Old Testament, and let's turn to Isaiah 28. Praise God. Starting in verse 7. Hallelujah. Sometimes some people think it's just the Holy Spirit just came into being in the, the new covenant. But he's been here. Amen. If God's been here and he always was, then he's been here. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah 28 verse 7 says, But they also have erred through wine and through intoxicating drink are out of the way. The priests and the prophets have erred through their intoxicating drink and they are swallowed up by wine. They are out of the way through intoxic intoxicating drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. The Amplified Version says it like this. But even these reel with wine and stagger from strong drink. The priest and the prophet reel with strong drink and are confused by wine. They staggered from strong drink. They reel while seeing visions. They stagger when announcing judgment. In one more message, it says this. These also, the priest and the prophets, staggered from drink, wavering, falling down drunks, besought with wine and whiskey, can't stand straight, can't talk, talk sense. Every table is covered with vomit. They live in vomit. Isaiah was a prophet at that time, and they, he lived during the time that Israel was not walking with God. And so he stood up and he prophesied these things through the Holy Spirit. And he was talking about they were, re, they were erring in their religion. Yes, they were also literally with strong drink. But he was talking about their religion. He's talking about them being drunk on their own religion, the things that they had made up instead of going by what God had said. That means they were so fixed on what they believed that they could, you couldn't tell them anything. Do you find that today yeah. in some ways? But they were intoxicated with their own way, doing their own thing and doing those things. And, and uh, uh, it means that they were just so fixed, you couldn't tell them anything. They were drunk on it, full of it. We'd say it like this. They're just full of themselves. Can't tell them anything. In verse 8, it says, for all the tables are full of filthy vomit so that there is no place that is clean. This verse tells us the way God sees them, the way he was seeing them in that day. It tells them what he was seeing. The message says it like this. Every table is covered with vomit. They live in vomit. Their place of worship or their religion was full of vomit. What happens when you get drunk? Many times. If you drink too much, what happens? You vomit. Amen. So he was relating to that just like in drinking drinking strong wine, which they did. The priests and the prophets were drinking in that day. And so many times people today think that it's okay. But God had a different view of it. Yeah. Not just the literally drinking of wine and strong drink, but their religion, the way they were seeing things. And then uh, also says in one place, it says that your religion makes the word of God 
of no effect in your life. And so the way God was seeing it was like a table set out and there was puke all over it. There was vomit all over it. That's your ways. Then in verse 9, he says this. They say, to whom would he teach knowledge? And to whom would he explain the message? Those just weaned from milk? Those just taken from the breast? Verse 8 says, for he says, precepts upon precepts, precepts upon precepts, rule upon rule, rule upon rule, here a little, there a little. What's he talking about? You need the word of God. Amen. That he said he was going to teach them. It means it doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes, I don't know, we get into things of God and we think we've arrived just because we, you know, we get in there and we get a revelation. Did you know that this is a progressive revelation? Yeah, I mean, it goes on and on and on. And the one revelation you have today on healing is even bigger than that. You know, it just goes on and on. So line upon line and rule upon rule, precept upon precept is how he's going to teach. I noticed here that he was not teaching those that were sick on or, you know, drinking on their own, drinking wine or their own religion, their own way, but as those that are babies, babies, babies in the word of God. What happens to babies? They grow up. <laughs> they grow up and they become teenagers. And then what happens when they become teenagers? Right. <laughs> Amen. So it, he's saying this is how that he was going to teach them. But at verse 11 and 12 is what I really like. He says, indeed, the Lord will teach these people in a more humiliating way by men with stammering lips in a foreign tongue. Indeed, the Lord will teach his, this people in a more humiliating way by men with stammering lips and foreign tongue. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. How is he going to teach us? He's, we're going to read the word and then we're going to pray in the spirit and then he's going to reveal things and disclose things to us, open things up to us. And the more word we have, working word, in us, the more he's going to be able to share with us. Amen. Verse 13 says, therefore, the word of the Lord to them will be merely monotonous repetition, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, rule upon rule, rule upon rule, here a little, there a little, that they may go and stumble backwards and be broken and snared and taken captive. They didn't listen. They didn't take the word as God speaking it to them. They just read it. Sometimes, when we sit down and we read the word and we just read the word, we have to read the word and take it upon ourselves. We have to say, it's God speaking to me. Lots of times we'll read the word and we want to give it to somebody else. We have to read the word and we have to eat it first. And then maybe you'll get to share it with somebody else. It depends. They may not be dealing with it in the same way that you are. So it's very, very, you know, it's kind of like at a, in a message in a meeting the same word goes out, but everybody's going to hear it in a different way. But what happens is many times is if you're, if you're married and you're spending time with God and you're reading the word and God shows you something, then you go to your spouse and you say, you know what he showed me? You know what he told me? I'm supposed to give this to you. And that's usually not received very well, you know? Uh, another thing sometimes that we do is we, we walk around and we get a hold of the word of faith and we're standing in faith and believe in God for things. And when you're well, when everything's going well, it's easy to say, yes, by Jesus stripes I'm healed. And yes, he supplies all my needs. But then you come under an attack. The last thing you need is somebody coming to you and say, well, just stand up on the word of God. You know that. Right. That's compassionate. That's not, how, that's not what love does. Love will encourage you. I'll lock my faith in with you, honey. And we'll agree together that this is going to leave. That's what we do. I'm not going to pound him in the head. He knows what the word says as much as I do. He comes under attack and I go, doggone that devil. I don't get upset at him. I get upset at the enemy. My far, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, right? Amen. So we need to, we need to be uh, godlike. Jesus-like, and that's the way he would deal with it. But, you know, we read that one scripture that he turned over the table, the money table, and so we think that that's the way he's going to respond to everything. You're not doing it right, so turn the table over, you know. No, he don't. 
It always says that he was moved with compassion. Everywhere he went, he was moved with compassion. He moved with compassion. John 16, we need the Holy Ghost in order to be able to, talk, to, be able to do what I just said. You've got to be so full of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. Amen. That when somebody hugs you, it just squeezes out like a sponge. John 16, 13 says, But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into the truth, the full and complete truth. He will not speak of his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father, the message regarding the Son. And he will disclose it to you, what is to come in the future. The Holy Spirit is going to use the word of God to lead us. And the more word of God we have in us, the better we'll be able to be led. Amen? If we get so full of the word of God, and it'll help then in things not pertaining exactly to what you're asking, but a word will come up, and you'll know exactly what to do. A word will come up, and you'll be able to move with it. But if we're not cooperating with the Holy Spirit, then we're not going to move. We're going to stay mere humans. We are human, Right? But when we have the Holy Ghost and we're listening to him, then we're superhumans, full of the Holy Ghost. That takes, that's uh, what he says. The Holy Spirit's going to use the word of God to lead and guide us. We must cooperate with him. They didn't. That's what he was saying. So they were being chastised. It says, well, okay, this is the way we're going to lead. Now with stammering lips and other tongues, I'll speak to these people. They had no clue what he was talking about. And he's talking about the future for us. It's great, but when he leads us in the Bible, that, that we can say that's great, but there's things outside of the Bible. Like, what job should I take? You know, where should I go? What should I do? Sometimes we need answers outside of that, don't we? Well, he's going to lead us outside the Bible. Let's turn to Romans 8. Romans 8, 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps us our infirmities. For we know... Not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Amen. Verse 26 says, In the same way the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as well as we should, but the Spirit himself knows our need at the right time and intercedes on our behalf with sighs, groanings too deep for words. Praise God. That word infirmity means weakness. It means test, trials, problems. He's going to help us with test, trials, problems. That in this world, we're going to, everybody's going to have them. And guess what? We all have them at different times. Yes. Aren't you glad? Yes. You know why? It's so that when one's having them, we can help them. Right. We can help with the help of God. Help them out. Amen. We have a helper, and we need to cooperate with him. Say, I need, I need to, cooperate to cooperate with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. What, a what a joy. He's got the joy. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. There are times when we are not sure what to do, so what do we do? We pray in tongues. You know, we need to pray in tongues even before we pray with some, for some things. Just pray in the Spirit and kind of get a... Feel for what God wants, you know. And if we're, pray, if we're praying in tongues often then you don't have to do it when praying for uh, somebody. You're already prayed up, so it won't take long for the, the, the words and things to come up for you to be able to say over that individual or over that situation. Amen. When we pray in other tongues, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us according to the will of God. We want the will of God in our lives, right? Amen. Glory to God. Intercession. The action of intervening on behalf of another. The action of inter intervening on behalf of another. Now that takes compassion. Yes. That takes moving with the Holy Ghost. Because I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm busy. Are you busy? Yes. Well, I don't have time for this. I got to do this. I got to do that. When we're cooperating with him, he's going to come at the most inconvenient times. 
when you're, you're full of and you've got a whole bunch of things to do. I, I read something Miss Lynette put on Facebook the other day, and she was, you know, wanted, was going to go do something and take care of something. She said, I don't have time to do what she felt prompted to do for someone else. Well, I don't have time, but she said, well, you know, she's, she's learned a long time ago. Might as well just listen to him, you know, because it's not going to go away. And so she just listened to him and was such a blessing to someone else. It may be just a simple little thing. You know, sometimes we're looking for these big, gigantic things, in, uh, in the, it's the little things that make the difference in somebody's life. It is the little things. Praise God. The Holy Spirit acts on behalf before the Father when we pray in tongues. We need to cooperate with him. Praise God. You know, we have families, we have kids, we got all these things going on, and you know, it just doesn't feel like it can fit that you can do this, but you can do this. Some folks don't think tongues is for today. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. First, and this is their scripture. First Corinthians says, love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. You know, they really didn't get going until Acts. So it really wasn't under the old covenant. Anyhow, it's under the new covenant. And Acts is still moving. Praise God. Are you, are you a church of the acts? Yes. The acts that gets excited about the things of God? Yes. Those people in that day, that when they roamed, they were going all over. They were leaving things and doing things so that they could go and pray for people, lay hands on people. I mean, they, just, they were just excited. They would gather together in the upper room. We only see one account, but they daily went into homes. They daily went in and listened to the word of God. They daily was praying for other people. They daily did this. It wasn't just Sunday and Wednesday. It was, they were so excited about what they had learned, what they had gotten. When they got filled with the Holy Ghost, it was like their brains blew out. And they didn't have any better sense than to just do what Jesus said to do. And they started doing it. You know, we need to get that happening to us again. You know, many of us have been saved for a while and filled with the Holy Ghost for a while and get a little bit of doing it for a while. And, and you know, and it, it can get old. Well, you'll get old. You will get old if you let it go and don't keep going with it. What do you think keeps you young when you're older? That's what keeps you young. I've seen young people that look older than I do. Why? Because they're not keeping the inside young and vibrant and alive with the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. Amen. Got to do it. That's what they did. And they went all over the place preaching the word and sharing the word of God and talking about Jesus everywhere. They were going into homes and praying and doing all those things. Praise God. But they're going to cease. Knowledge is going to, and it will vanish away. But we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. Verse 12. For we now see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Who do you think is going to make that real to us? When you come to church, who do you think is making things real to you? If you put yourself in a position, if you set yourself up, you know, to to get something, to get, uh, you know, alive in God, then he's not going to disappoint. Amen. Glory to God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Mark 16. The Great Commission, as it's called. He says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not It it by no means will hurt them, and they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. They didn't have any better sense than just to believe it. We need to get better sense, or any better sense, but believe it. Amen. 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 You say, well, I do believe. I can't see it. (laughs) I am happy. I'm excited about Jesus. Yeah. Really? I've seen you excited about a new car. I've seen you excited about a home, you know. Yeah, it's all over Facebook, you know, when something like that. But, I mean, to be excited about 
hearing. You get to come to church. I mean, I, all day today, I've kind of just reflected when I think about my life and some of the things that have happened in the past. I'm so thankful. In fact, I, w- I said to somebody, I said, I know it's not Thanksgiving, but I feel very, very thankful. Yeah. Very thankful where I could have been. Amen. Amen. And the things that he kept me from. Yes. Not everything, but <laughs> not everything was I kept from. But even in the midst of the things that I shouldn't have been in, he, he took care of me. Other people were killed. Other people have died. Other people, I mean, I, I have four great-grandsons, four grandsons, one granddaughter, and three great-grandsons. I am blessed. I mean, I could have not been here. There are people my age that aren't here. And I've been re- just kind of thinking back on all that and becoming very, very thankful, and I'm alive unto God. It's because I, he is first. Amen. I mean, like, really first. Glory to God. And get excited about him. I'm not, I'm not going to pull back. I'm not ashamed to go all out and be all hog for God. I'm not ashamed of that. I don't care when anybody thinks, you know, that I'm a little bit whatever. I'm glad I'm a little bit whatever because it makes me feel good. <laughs> and you can be a little bit whatever, too. I'm hoping it gets on you. <laughs> it is a whosoever will thing, anyhow, so... But you guys got it. I mean, he's in there. The Holy Ghost is in there. And you just cooperate with him. Just go with him. It's kind of like you go with the flow. You just go with him. Amen. And he will give you joy unspeakable and full of glory in the midst of the ugliest things. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. See, we get physical. (laughs) glory to god you just got to walk with him you know just i don't like this then do whatever he tells you to do he didn't do this (laughs) amen but he said they'll speak with new tongues what do you need new tongues for because the old one's dirty (laughs) it's old (laughs) it belongs to the old man The new man has a new tongue with a new language. Praise God. And I can still dance. I just have a different partner. Pastor was talking about disco. You know, we'd go to disco. Well, I can still paint my lips and I can still disco with God. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. And he's got all the money I need. Yep. He says he'll give you whatever it is your little heart's desire. And he wants you to look good. All the time. And I try to do my part. You know, I wish to just fix my hair, but I have to do it. You know, I said, do you give me the grace? I mean, when you get older, you know, you have to ask him about a lot of things, don't you? That you that you used to do without his help. (laughs) And now you need his help. Like, let's get out of bed, God, you know. (laughs) Right? When, when you're 23 years old, you don't think about that. You just bounce around and just do, do whatever. When you get a little bit older, you say, where did I put that? Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> That's why he says that we have a good memory because he is our memory. He knows where everything is. Nothing missing, nothing broken. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men. Hmm. Not talking to you. <laughs> But unto God, we can speak in new tongues and we can talk to God. We can go straight there and talk to God all the time. I mean, I wanted to be a nun when I was younger. And, uh, but you couldn't have kids and I wanted children, so that didn't work. So I couldn't be a nun. But I wanted to marry God. We are. Yes, we are the bride of Christ. <laughs> Glory to God. And we get to talk to him all the time and he's going to talk back. Amen. Glory to God. So he says, we're not speaking unto men, we're speaking to God. For no one understands him, however, he, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Well, it's not a mystery to them, and he wants to make every mystery known to us. It's not a secret. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Acts 2, 4, he says, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was that the wrong scripture no. it's okay 
<laughs> What's that they say? It's my world, and you're welcome to it. You know, <laughs> X two four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> when, and when already happened, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord, <laughs> in one place. <laughs> one is not a lonely number when you're with God. <laughs> and suddenly... <laughs> Not such a suddenly, though, because anyhow, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house <laughs> where they were sitting. <laughs> Whew. I can't read because my eyes are watering. <laughs> now, this is cooperating with the Holy Ghost, but... <laughs> Uh, line upon line, precept upon precept. <laughs> then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each one of them. <laughs> yeah, it was sat on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues, speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Praise God for tongues. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> I mean, I'm giving you all I got. Is it not enough? <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah 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 glory to god let's just lift our hands and praise god hallelujah 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 glory to god hallelujah hallelujah Glory to God. <laughs> yeah, and this is that. <laughs> that was spoken by the prophet Joel. Yes? yes. Yeah. And they were all filled <laughs> and began to speak in other tongues. Is the Spirit giving you utterance? They were all filled. Everybody just lift their voice to the Lord now. Andoro brush andoro biki de la basa. Anda le di mas andoro di shikini na ma ha 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 ha. No 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 lo bakas andoro de de de. All filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives them the utterance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Hallelujah. <laughs> What are you going to do? Open the door and come in. <laughs> they left. First Corinthians 14, 2. I want to say this again. What are you doing when you're speaking in other tongues? You're speaking to God. You're speaking to God. We're talking about our prayer language now. We're talking about what we can talk to God every single day. English, yes, but I don't know about you, but my English only goes so far and then it just kind of falls to the ground. Some can go longer, but eventually it's going to hit the ground when you're talking to God. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him, howbeit the Spirit he speak, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. The, the Message Bible says this, Give yourself to the gifts of God gives you. Most of all, try to proclaim the truth. 
If you praise him in the private language of tongues, God understands you, but no one else does. For you are sharing intimacies just between you and him. You are talking to God, divine secrets and mysteries about him, the future, and your life. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. You have to edify, be edified before you can edify. Amen. Amen. Amen? So, edify means to build up, to charge like a battery. My, my brand new car, I guess, is a couple of years old, and I guess the batteries wear out after so long. And I went out to start my car one day, and it, 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 it wasn't going nowhere. And so I told the pastor, I said, something's wrong with my car. It's making all these weird, it, it send off a whole bunch of weird noises because it has all these computers. And so the thing, the brain was going wild and it was going click, 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 click. And the windshield wipers were going like this, but there was nothing, you know, it was, it was winding down. And I just looked at the car and thought that casting the devil out of it because it was, <laughs> I mean, it was wild. I think, is there something wrong in this car? <laughs> What's it? <laughs> Where'd I get the last bit of gas? <laughs> oh, mercy. <laughs> so, <laughs> it needed charged. Well, they don't charge them anymore. You have to get rid of them and get whole new batteries, which they were, it was a couple hundred dollars or something. I mean, they're not cheap. It used to be back in the day when things worked Good, you know, that the only home, the homeowner could fix things. Right. Now you got to be a brain surgeon to be able to do it. But we'd go and fill the, take the little caps off and put water in those batteries and, you know, let it bubble up in that. And it would recharge it, you know. Well, we're not going to throw you away. God's not going to throw us away. But we have a battery charger on the inside of us. And the Holy Spirit wants to, poof, you know, kind of wants to, you know. <laughs> Jump start you. That's what you do to get some cars going, you know, right? Yeah. Hook it up to shoop, you know, like this. <laughs> and, and we need that, glory to God. And we don't need it just at this time of year. We need it all the time. I need it all the time. Amen. It, it helps me. My physical body likes to be jump start by going out early in the morning and we go walk. It starts getting the blood pumping and everything going, you know, and it just kind of gets your, your energy going. The one day we couldn't walk, he went to work with Jason, so I, I didn't go walking because it was dark. Could have went later, but I didn't. And so I said, that was a long, awful day. You know, I didn't have that physical jump start going. You know, your body gets used to it. Likewise, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, I mean, he, was, he, he lives in there and he knows what makes that spirit tick and he knows what it needs. We just don't know. And so we need to get in there and charge up with him, pray in the spirit, pray in tongues. And that, you know that joy that you like to have? It'll bubble up. Amen. It'll bubble up. Amen. Yes, it'll, it, it'll come alive again. Amen. My car's doing well. Got a new battery, charged it up, and off it went. We had to take it up to the dealership. I mean, my goodness, you can't do nothing yourself. It messed up the whole radio. They had to re do stuff, you know. Then my battery went out of my little clicker. Oh, that was sweet. <laughs> so we got a new battery, so now it works real good, too. I mean, things run down. They run out, and so do you. <laughs> Doesn't matter how new it is. It's not even that old. Things just wear out. Amen. And we don't want to wear out. This is not the time in the season of God to wear out. Amen. We need to wear up. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Edify means to build up, to charge like a battery. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will charge you up and give you power to go on. Amen. The inner man being fully charged. The inner man, it's, we're talking about that. You say, well, you know. I had about 100 things go through my mind, and I didn't think I could fit 100 things in there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
need any wine. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Jude 20. <laughs> but you, <laughs> beloved, build yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You, beloved, Build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, praying in the Spirit doesn't give you more faith. The Word gives you faith. But what the praying in the Spirit will do will charge up the faith that's on in you and cause you to speak it out your mouth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We shouldn't, shouldn't open our mouth when something happens until we've charged up. And like Brother Hagin said, in his early days, it used to take him a while, you know, several hours to pray in the Spirit to get built up. But then he got to where he was doing it all the time so that it didn't take an hour. He could get there in five minutes. See, we can get there. We can, we can be better than where we are. We got to keep growing and growing and growing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What time is it? I have to get, okay, we're almost there. I have to get to a certain place because we're going to have a big finale next week. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> <clears throat> Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Verse 22. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but on others saved with fear, pulling them out of the, out of the fire, hating even the garments that defile their flesh. Praying in the Spirit doesn't give you the faith, but it gives the Word of God on the inside you to rise up. Amen. Praying in the Spirit will have allow our, the compassion of God on the inside of us to reach out to lost and dying world, even when we don't feel like it. You know, I don't always feel like it. I didn't feel like it tonight. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did tonight. I didn't feel like it last week, but I feel like it this week. Some of you don't feel like coming to church, but you did anyhow. Right? You know, it's, it's, it's the things that we have to do is we have to make a decision, we have to make a commitment, and then keep with it and just staying with it. I like what my daughter said the other day. She was telling somebody, she says, you got to just keep your word even to your own hurt, even when you don't feel like. She's heard her dad say that over and over and over. If you open your mouth and something comes out, you got to stay with it, even if it's not convenient, even if it doesn't, you know, something else come up. You know, you got to do it. You got to stay with it. It'll help you be able to trust this word, you know, when you can have your own going. Praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14 14 says, For if I pray in tongues, my spirit prays. Man, we need to let our spirit pray. <laughs> Amen. We know all we know is our, our mind and our intellect. You know, we just, we can go just so long. But our, our spirit just longs to talk to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But my, spirit, my understanding is unf unfruitful. We don't have to understand everything. So God made a way to bypass our limitations of thinking. He made a way so that we can bypass what we think about something, what we think. Amen? And we can pray in the spirit and find out, what he's thinking about it, and then be able to say what he's thinking, and that'll work. Amen. Amen. Back to Romans 8.26. This is one of my favorites. 8.26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. doesn't mean we don't know how to pray. We just don't know how to pray about particular situations sometimes. For we do not know what we should pray for as well. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Verse 27 says the, the mind of the Spirit. That is an old English term that means plan. P-L-A-N, plan. So what's he saying? He says when we pray in the Spirit the will of God or the plan of God in our lives. He says he knows the mind or the plan of God for our lives. Amen. Isn't that good? He knows the plan. We think we know the plan. I would have never planned what he's already planned. I wouldn't have even, I wouldn't have even considered I had a whole different plan. You know, I was going to be a short timer here. 
That's what I get for praying in tongues. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I was going to be a short timer here and be gone. But he had a plan. And his plan is where everything that I need is. And his plan for your life is where everything that he, he has for you. You know, it's easy to run. Things have not always been easy, not always been fulfilling for a lack of a better word, you know, feel like, well, if I went somewhere else, that, then I could do this or I could do that, and the people wouldn't, you know, I could start over again. You know, that's the famous thing. The enemy will try to get you. Somewhere else you're going to start over. You know, you're going with you, and you is the problem. <laughs> you know, you'd have to stay here and let you go, you know, in order for, you know. I mean, so it's not going to change. It's not always your location. It's what plan, praying out the plan of God for your life. And that's not always easy because, like I said, I didn't want to stay. It's taken years and years and years and years. Did I like the people that, that have been here? Yes. But I didn't want to stay here. I don't know where I wanted to go, but it wasn't here. You know, I mean... They're Okies. <laughs> I can say that now because I'm one. Yeah, I have no problem with it, but it took me a long time. In fact, I am, I'm actually proud of it. I like country now. Yeah. yeah. I brought a little Michigan with me, though. That's rock and roll. Yeah, so I have a little bit of country and a little bit of rock and roll. But, you know, we've got to pray out the plan of God. And, it, and I remember hearing Kate McFay say this years and years ago, that she prayed in the Spirit. She was 16 years old and prayed in the Spirit, prayed in the Spirit, ended up graduating school, went on to Ramah, still praying in the Spirit, praying out the plan of God for her life. And, of course, when she got out of school, you know, ministry opened up for her, and then she's been traveling, you know, ever since. But it was through praying in the Spirit. She play, prayed out the plan of God for her life. Well, you're not necessarily going to go out there and evangelize somewhere, but God has a plan for your life right here right where you sit, and there's a, a good plan, you know, and we have to pray in the Spirit, and that's not just passively. We get up every morning, for the most part, every morning, and we walk so that we can have the outcome that we want, and so we do that every day, so we faithfully committed to doing that. Well, praying in the Spirit needs to be that way if you want to get the whole plan. You might only pray for 20 years and only get half the plan, and then you're going to be at the end of that going, well, now what? It shouldn't be now what? It should be we progressively, we pray in the Spirit, we do it every day, and we get the whole plan, you know, mapped out for us. And I've been thinking about you, wondering where you were. Hallelujah. Now I know where you are. You're sitting right here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When we pray in the Spirit, we pray the will and the plan of God into our lives and into other people's lives, which is really important. Learn and train yourself to cooperate with him. You know, when you don't feel like doing it. When you, what, the other morning, Pastor and I got out. What was it? That's the day we didn't go, wasn't it? Yeah. He used to, he had t we had time to go. He was going to go work with Jason, but we had time to go. And uh, he says, oh, I don't feel like going. I said, I don't either. So we didn't. Normally, if one or the other doesn't feel like it, the other one you know, kind of just moves it along. So you always want to have somebody that's on the opposite, you know. <laughs> he teases, uh, we're going to do this next week. He teases and says that you don't, you know, both of us pastoring the church, you don't want us both to get upset at you at the same time. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Remember you used to say that all the time? He says, it's good that when I'm upset at somebody, you're still on these so you can still love them and take care of them, you know. <laughs> And then if I'm the one that's growling, then he said, I'll take care of him. So if we get upset at the same time, you're in trouble. <laughs> Stand on your feet. Praise God. I hope you just enjoyed yourself and laughed yourself a little bit. It's good. It's good to laugh. When you get in the Holy Ghost, and just, just laugh. And especially when you don't feel like it. Like it. You know? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you don't take much. You know. <laughs> Little feather. <laughs> Father, we do thank you for your word. Thank you for strengthening and encouraging us tonight. We thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost, that he is leading us and guiding us and telling us all things that pertain to life and godliness. We give you the praise for it tonight, Father. And we intend to be obedient to your word, to follow what you say, and do it every day. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. 
Come join us at New Beginnings Family Church, located in Mustang, Oklahoma, at 1615 East State Highway 152. You can find us online on Facebook and YouTube or at walkbyfaith.info. To contact us, call 405-261-6887. And remember, you don't need a second chance. You need a new beginning.